Welcome to this tutorial on further features of the air-to-air -air radar in the Mirage F1, including those for ACM or close combat situations. We will go over the APS track while scan mode, the TL boresight or sight head auto acquisition mode, and the BZ zone scanning auto acquisition mode. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the Ejaculiferous Mirage F1 and today we'll be looking at some further functions of the Cyrano 4 radar, including techniques used in close combat situations and some features that have been added since the last update to the module. We are currently flying over the northern Marianas Islands in the Pacific Ocean and whilst the islanders breakfast below, we have some rogue aircraft passing overhead. Hopefully you will have watched the previous tutorial on air-to-air -air radar use in the Mirage F1, and like that tutorial, today won't specifically be about weapons employment, simply locating, targeting, and tracking locked targets. It is also important to note that as the module is still in early access, the radar's modeling may receive an upgrade to improve its realism in the future. But for now, let's see how we can use the system as is. Like most airborne radars of this age, potential targets could be locked up by focusing all of the radar's energy on them once they had been located. Prior to a recent update, only the APC, Autorisation de Poursuit Continue, or Continuous Pursuit Authorization Lock, was modeled. This mode is similar to the single target track mode found in other aircraft. We now have the ability to employ the APS lock. APS, or Autorisation Pre Seleccioni, is similar to designating or pre selecting a target in modes such as track while scan or range while search found in other aircraft. This mode allows the pilot to monitor one target and gain further information on it, whilst the radar continues to monitor the sky by dedicating some of its power to the usual but a more restricted radar sweep. Target designation for an APS track while scan lock is done with the APS slash APC selection lever on the radar stick, found in the trigger position, and by moving the lever upwards. To designate and lock a target, place the alidade over the radar return of interest and press for an APS lock. As with the APC lock, in some instances this will take numerous attempts dependent on the strength and distinction of the radar return. Simply release and repress the button until a lock is achieved. Here we can see various radar returns. Our tactical conditions call for us to keep a check on all potential hostiles in the area. However, we would like to especially monitor the nearest radar return more closely. So let's traverse the Alidade over the nearest return, and in this instance Press for an APS track while scan lock. When a lock is achieved, the symbology on the radar scope will change. The Alidade's strobe symbol has rotated 90 degrees to the horizontal position, just like in APC single target track, to indicate that the lock has been achieved. However, unlike in APC lock, we can see in APS that the radar sweep is continuing across the scope to show that the radar is still dedicating some of its processing time to searching the sky for contacts. This is different to the APC single target track where the sweep was replaced with a narrow band concentrated around the locked target to show that the radar was concentrating all of its power there. This allows us to maintain situational awareness on other radar contacts. When an APS track while scan lock is achieved, the radar restricts itself to a 60 degree, one bar sweep, regardless of the settings set by the pilot using the relevant switches. 
As the radar makes its sweep, it will rescan the lock target and recenter the antenna, and hence the Allidate's strobe, over the target in terms of bearing and distance. In other words, the pilot no longer needs to manually steer the radar antenna. As usual, the position of the strobe marking the target indicates the range and bearing, which can be discerned from the markings on the radar scope. Whilst a target is marked in APS track while scan, the radial speed marker is displayed to indicate the closure rate to that target. To recap, if the horizontal marker is above the break in the line, we have a positive closure rate. The distance between our own aircraft and the lock target is decreasing. If the marker is below the break, the target is getting away. In other words, we have a negative closure rate, or the distance between us is increasing. APS track while scan is useful for a number of reasons. Obviously, it allows us to maintain situational awareness on more than one target, whilst more closely monitoring a particular one. It can help us make decisions as to whether to engage a target, given the information on the AO. There are, however, some caveats and limitations. The imposed 60-degree one-bar sweep is necessary for the APS lock to be maintained, but there is the potential that smaller radar returns with slow closure rates are not detected. Likewise, potential hostiles at significantly different altitudes may be missed. Marking targets in APS rather than APC may help to disguise our intentions by limiting the information picked up by enemy radar warning receivers, as the APS is not a concentration of electromagnetic radiation. However, the semi-active radar-guided missiles employed by the Mirage F-1 cannot be guided using an APS track while scan lock. For those, we must switch to an APC single target track before firing. APC and APS locks achieved in this manner by steering the Allidade onto the target on the radar scope and using the APC slash APS trigger on the radar stick are examples of manual lock acquisition. Like other aircraft, the radar can also be compelled to automatically lock targets when certain conditions are met. These are best used in ACM, close combat, or dogfighting situations. The Mirage F-1 has two such modes. TL, or Telemetry, is similar to a Boresight or HUD search mode. And BZ, or Balayage par zone, which is a semi-steerable zone scanning mode. Both are short-range auto-acquisition modes. They will only lock up a target between 400 and 7,000 meters, a maximum range of approximately 3.8 nautical miles. The modes are accessed when the radar is functioning normally by adjusting the TL-BPZ selector switch on the left wall of the cockpit rather than the radar function selection dial. The switch is difficult to see, so it is best off bound. The TL and BZ close combat modes take priority over all other radar modes and will override your current radar settings. Let's first take a look at TL mode by placing the switch in the up position. The green light adjacent to TL should illuminate on the radar scope, and the symbology will change. In TL mode, the scope is fixed in the 7 nautical miles scale range, and we can see that the radar antenna is scanning a narrow sweep directly in front of us. The Allidate is no longer displayed, and is not steerable. The condensed sweep is a square, with a 9.5 degree side, scanning along the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. The first aircraft detected within this square, and within the maximum range of 3.8 nautical miles, will be automatically placed into an APC single target track, without the need for us to manually designate the target with the Allidade. 
The additional stripe in the center of the scan on the radar scope represents the auto acquisition range. You will see that the top of the line is just shy of four nautical miles. So here we have a split screen showing the sight head and the radar scope. There is a MiG-21 fish bed just ahead of us trying to escape, and we are going to lock him using the TL auto acquisition. So let's set TL mode using the switch on the left wall. All we need to do is keep the target roughly within the sight head and bring him into range. The target is approximately six nautical miles ahead of us and his radar echo can actually be seen on the radar scope. The target is now just over four nautical miles. Remember, auto acquisition occurs at seven kilometers or 3.8 nautical miles. And there we go, target is locked and we have managed to lock him at the maximum possible automatic range, likely as we have no ground clutter behind the target, and our radar symbology has changed to show an APC single target track, exactly as it would had we acquired the target manually. The usual orange target designator square has also appeared in the sight head. Let's now look at the second auto acquisition mode, BZ or BPZ mode, by placing the switch into the down position. Again, indication that the mode has been initiated will be shown by the green light adjacent to BZ on the radar scope, and the symbology will have changed. Just like TL mode, in BZ mode, the scope is fixed in the seven nautical mile scale, and we can see the radar antenna is scanning a narrow sweep directly in front of us, with the Allidade strobe no longer in use. However, do note that the scan width is slightly wider than in TL. The scanned area is a square with a 20 degree side. The center of the square is positioned at zero degrees relative bearing and approximately 13 degrees above the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. Alternatively, this can be thought of as the base of the square being approximately three degrees above the longitudinal axis. Uniquely, the scan pattern is a six bar sweep within this square. Like TL, the first aircraft detected within this square and within the maximum range of 3.8 nautical miles will be automatically placed into an APC single target track, without the need for manual designation. Unlike TL, however, we can reposition the center of this square 15 degrees either to the left or to the right to change the area being scanned. This is done by using the left and right Allidade steering controls, which would ordinarily be used to steer the Allidade. Notice how the symbology slews on the radar scope. Somewhat unusually, the scan pattern is not ground referenced, but aircraft referenced. So as the aircraft rolls, the scanned area will also roll and remain in its relative position to the pilot's view and not the horizon. So here we have our split screen again. There is another MiG-21 fish bed lurking just to the left of us, and this time we will employ BZ zone scanning. 
So let's slew the scan zone over to the left. Target is almost in range. And there we go, auto acquisition. We are using short range semi active radar homing missiles, so we do need to bring him into range. Fox one. And there we go. Simple methods for achieving that desired lock using our two auto acquisition modes. Very useful in close range situations. As TL and BZ modes override all other radar functions, remember to deselect them after use by placing the selector switch back into its central position. This will return all our usual radar functions for BVR use. When an APC lock is achieved using either of the two close range modes, all the usual factors for maintaining the lock apply. We can disengage by using the radar unlock button, or by turning away from the target until it leaves the gimbal limits of the radar antenna. There are also further interactions with the C plus M or SW button which we shall look at when covering weapons employment. Likewise, there are many other radar functions and features that will be covered in future tutorials. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for your patience, I am still quite ill, but I'm pleased I have been able to at least get this tutorial video out to you. More to come, hopefully, very soon. If you are wondering, Jackuliferous describes something that has spines or darts. With genuine and a special thanks to my patrons, especially Yan11, Lakota21, Plavs, Starlover, and introducing our new supporters, the delightful Rhapsody Angel, the exceptional Worky Ticket, and the mysterious ED7856. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment, and share, but until next time, virtual aviators keep on rocking and keep on flying. This is Reva saying, last call.